So I was browsing official websites for Super Mario Bros. Wonder, always looking for new bits of information, and I came across something that was really fascinating and deals with online play or at least online related features that are likely going to be in Super Mario Bros. Wonder that Nintendo has not actually announced or discussed yet and is something we are likely to find out exact details on over the course of Gamescom in the next week and a half. We also have some other information coming from the ESRB that does potentially tease DLC or something worse, <laughs> we'll talk about that, for Super Mario Bros. Wonder as well. Before we dive in, I just want to remind you guys, we are on a road to 150,000 subscribers, so if you really enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and go ahead and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of all future content. Now, let's get into this news, and the first thing you see on screen here is this is the UK website for Super Mario Bros. Wonder. You can see I'm actually logged in, but I can't buy anything because it's not associated with this country. That's my account. Okay, cool. But I noticed something at the bottom of the overview page that is not listed on other overview pages, and that is this. Now, it says this description was provided by the publisher, so Nintendo themselves put this in here. So to be able to download... Okay, this is about downloads. To be able to purchase download games or download demos of software at the eShop official website, you need to have a Nintendo account, which is linked to your Nintendo Switch console. You need to have your console registered as the active console for downloads. Okay, cool. We don't need to be told how to purchase and download games. We understand that. But this second paragraph really caught me off guard. So this software, so this software, this, this is Mario Wonder. This software includes modes, or features for which an internet connection and a paid membership to Nintendo Switch Online are required. Any online play modes require a paid membership to Nintendo Switch Online. To use online services, you must create a Nintendo account, accept the related agreement, yada, 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 find out more about paid Nintendo Switch Online memberships. And it says multiplayer requires one compatible controller per player, additional controllers sold separately. So what's interesting in looking at this is my first thought is probably what you guys are thinking of. Oh yeah, if they're saying you required NSO, you know, there's certain modes and features, they're talking about cloud game saves, right? Because we can do cloud game saves. Well, that's what I thought as well until I went over and I glanced at Tears of the Kingdom. As you can see, we're still on the UK website because you can see can't do anything, and we're in the overview section, and I'm like, huh, let's see, anywhere in here do they mention needing a Nintendo Switch online account uh, for some sort of mode or feature? Because we know there's no online features for Nintendo, uh, well, at least for Tears of the Kingdom, but we do know that it does support cloud game saves. So I'm just scrolling down here. You see this is much more fleshed out. Again, this is a game that's already released, so it's going to be a bit more fleshed out. But we're scrolling down. We're scrolling down compatible with Amiibo. See all compatible purchase options, eShop or the website, we're scrolling down. Well, nothing yet. Nothing yet. We'll keep going. We're not too far from the bottom. Oh, this description was provided by the publisher. That looks familiar, but there's nothing else there. Now, we have our additional information down here, age ratings, controllers, etc. But you'll notice that there is nothing there about Nintendo Switch Online membership for a specific mode or feature, even though you can argue that Cloud Game Saves is a specific feature. I find this to be quite fascinating that we look at Tears of the Kingdom or really any other game that is just has Cloud Game Saves, and it doesn't talk about this on the UK website, but it is bringing it up specifically for Super Mario Bros. Wonder. So it does make you wonder, I guess the pun's intended here, what could this be? Now, I got in a little back and forth with uh, my good friend Player Essence, a fellow content creator, and he made a suggestion to me I had not considered because obviously the first thing that pops in mind when you hear, huh, uh, there are some modes or features that require online subscriptions, internet connection. Man, it must be an online multiplayer mode. If it's not, you know, multiplayer from the main game, maybe there's a separate battle mode or some other multiplayer mode they just haven't announced yet. And that could obviously be technically be true. I know all the official websites only list one to four players locally, so I understand that that might seem a bit of a stretch, but he mentioned something that I hadn't considered, and that was the potential of leaderboards. Now, leaderboards exist in various games on Nintendo Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation, and some of these leaderboards do require you to be subscribed to PlayStation Plus, Xbox, well, I guess it's not Xbox Live anymore. What do they call it? Xbox 
the game something. I don't even know. I'm subscribed to the damn thing. I don't even know what it's called. Whatever. Xbox is subscription service. And then we obviously have Nintendo Switch online. So there are games that were certain leaderboards were required. I kept wondering, well, this is mostly a single player game or a local game. Why would we need leaderboards? And it could just be for some things that we've gotten in prior Mario games. Remember, there's a crown that passes around. Now, that crown doesn't necessarily have to be related to online leaderboards, but it could contain a local leaderboard that maybe you can compare with other people's local leaderboards. That's one possibility. There could also be things like time trials, you know, the fastest people through a level, and there's online rankings for that. There could also be just other types of leaderboards for different aspects of the game. Again, we don't know a lot about the games. I'm trying to speculate on what those leaderboards could be is, you know, really just anyone's guess. But another thing I want to throw out there is, you know, in some games, they have these things called ghost runs. We've had them in Mario Kart before. And what if the NSO is required for, for there to be a ghost run? So let's say you access a stage and it notes, hey, the fastest time in the world is this by this person. And you want to race against the ghost of that person to try to beat that level as fast as they did. So that could be a thing, too, as well. It could be locked behind Nintendo Switch Online. Honestly, the uh, all we can really say here is that there's some sort of mode or feature or something in this game that specifically requires an online subscription to Nintendo Switch Online that is not related to cloud game saves. And that's really all we have. Now, Cloud Games is, by the way, are already confirmed for the title. If people were worried about that, we already have that confirmation. But we not like we needed to really worry about that. There's only a few select video games that legitimately you should have worried about it with. Games like Splatoon 3. That being said, we also need to get into our next story. And this also deals with Super Mario Wonder. That's right. We have a Super Mario Wonder exclusive video today. And something that we should have noticed a while ago got past me and it might have got past you as well so you guys remember when we made a video talking about the esrb rating and i have it on screen right here for the super mario bros wonder and we had this information down here talking about the boss battles and stuff like that you know just some little small tidbits we hadn't had before where stages are being manipulated and destroyed that's really neat but what i want to focus on is this right here in game purchases now again this is officially listed by the esrb and they aren't going to list something that's not there and in-game purchases are things that require you to spend real world money on things in game now this could be various different things it could just be dlc and right now we don't even have the main game so it'd be interesting that they're already planning dlc and this is a confirmation potentially of dlc Notably, in-game purchases are not listed on the ESRB rating for Tears of the Kingdom. Don't believe me? Well, here is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom on the ESRB website. And it's fantasy violence, miles just the themes, non-interactive... Oh, look. No. No listing for in-game purchases. So, this does suggest that something is happening with Super Mario Bros. Wonder that's different than Tears of the Kingdom. And it could just be that there's going to be Day 1 DLC or something like that. Obviously... We can't ignore this potentially could be something negative. We could be looking at in-game item shops to buy cosmetics. We could be looking at loot boxes. All of that would also be in-game purchases. So we, we have to be wary when we see the term in-game purchases to realize there's a lot of negativity that could be surrounding that. But also we need to remember that it could just be something positive as well. Something, you know, like DLC. And again, I can mention something like this because we're going to look at a game like Splatoon 3 from the ESRB and we notice it also includes in-game purchases and we know there's DLC. So yeah, it, it just sort of seems like this, this could just be DLC and Nintendo does list in-game purchases on every single game they've released on Switch that has purchasable, separately purchasable DLC. So that's probably what it means, but we can't dismiss that it could be a negative some people might want to do it because Nintendo hasn't, you know, dove headfirst like EA and other companies have into the negative side of things. But I just want to throw out there that we technically don't know because they haven't announced it. But yeah, it's probably DLC, which is kind of crazy to think we're going to get DLC for a side-scrolling Mario game. Is that the first? Is that the first DLC for a side-scrolling Mario game? I think so. I can't remember any other side-scrolling Mario game that has DLC. So if that's what this is, that's just really neat and obviously makes me really excited. Now, 
I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in and uh, watching this video on Super Mario Bros. Wonder. You can tune in right here to Nintendo Prime for all of your Super Mario Bros. Wonder needs. We're going to have tons of coverage of every detail, including stuff we dig up like this, but also officially announced stuff, uh, new gameplay, all that. You know, we're going to have all that stuff right here at Nintendo Prime, and I'm, I'm super stoked to show all that to you. And yeah, we're going to do the same thing for we got Mario RPG coming up, right? We're going to end up having that new Peach game, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, and so much more at Nintendo Prime. That's what we do. We talk about Nintendo games and systems and philosophies and, and dive deep into the news cycles around the biggest releases. So I can't wait, guys. Mario Wonders around the corner. Seriously, it arrives in October. It's, it's so much closer than you realize. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video. <laughs>